joined by Helen Judney, uh, who is also known as the Complaining Cow, a consumer rights champion. And it's time for Talking Money, the section of our show dedicated to answering your questions. And today we're discussing tomorrow's rail strikes and if you can get refunds for train tickets. Also, can you get money back for any other things that might have been disrupted because you can't travel? So if you have any questions, then give us a call and hopefully Helen will be able to give you some answers. 0207862222 is the number that you need. Um, so Helen, um, only about 20% of trains are gonna be running tomorrow. Um, big, big day of train strikes. Uh, plenty of people have been getting in touch with what to do, but let's, let's get the, sort of the basics out of the way. If you have a ticket booked for tomorrow, you can't travel, you can't get there any other way, what do you do? You get a refund. <laughs> it's, a, it. it's a simple, simple yeah, you contact your uh, company, so you get a form or you can do it online and get your full refund for that. And I assume that you, you contact the, the train company that you've booked train tickets with. So if you've booked directly with the company, you contact them. What if you've gone through a middle person that does all these ticket booking services that you have? You go straight to them? It's usually whoever you've given your money to, but right. you might find that it's easier to actually just go to the train company. It would depend who you've given your money to. OK, uh, plenty of people have been getting in touch. So um, here's one from Laura on Facebook. She says, my daughter tried travelling today. She paid for her ticket and the train was cancelled. So she bought another ticket and that got cancelled as well. So that's two tickets, no train and can't get her money back. So what can she do if she's struggling to get the refunds? Well, <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that she's struggling to get the refund because obviously she's fully entitled to the refund for both of them. It's contact the company, write, maybe go to the CEO, which would be quite, it could speed things up so you can get the CEO's um, address from ceoemail.com and write to them with all the evidence and say, I want my money back or I'm going to the Royal Ombudsman and then take the case of the Royal Ombudsman who will look at, at the case and that's binding on the company. So if they say you've got to pay the customer, they'll have to pay up. In your experience, Helen, um, w let's not name names uh, right now, but are some companies better than others in getting back to customers and offering those refunds? Yeah, I mean, that's that's in general, right across, you know, the whole sector, not just not just the railway sector. But yes, they are. Um, and I think it's potluck as to who you right. who you get. But, you know, you should be getting it within 14 days, really. Within 14 days. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I've found, which is sort of rather frustrating when this has happened to, to me, is it's so easy to book a ticket, which is wonderful. You have an app, you click a few buttons, done. And then all of a sudden you have to get a refund and you get told you need to get a form from the station. You need to fill it in, send it in by pigeon. It can only be done on Wednesday. You know, what are we getting processes that are going to be as easy as booking the ticket, as easy to get in your refund? You should do. For most, you should be able to, if you've, you know, you're on your phone and you've got your ticket on the phone, it should just be that you can just upload that on their system. But if, if you, know, you, you haven't got a phone and you haven't done it online, you should be able to go into the wherever you bought your physical ticket from and get a form there. OK, uh, let's move on to, to a few more questions. Ross has got in touch with us on Facebook. It says, my family and I arrive back in the UK from New York tomorrow and there is no train service back to Plymouth. Therefore, we've had to book a hotel for Saturday night. So if your plans have been disrupted and it means extra costs like having to book a hotel because you can't travel, what happens then? Can you can you get any money back for that cost you've incurred? Right, well, what's not quite clear there is whether he'd booked a ticket. Right, okay, <laughs> so, so let's, let's get both scenarios. Yeah. I assume if he hasn't booked a ticket, you can't just go to to a train company and go, oh, I've had to get a hotel, yeah. you give me some money. <laughs> no. right. so, so if in that situation, you know, it just actually I was going to get the ticket when I when I got there, um, that wouldn't work and it'd be sensible to get it in advance anyway because it's cheaper, obviously. Right. But if you have bought that ticket, then you could claim that as consequential loss. Okay. So it's worth writing to the company and again going to the CEO if, if the initial customer service people say no, outlining all the evidence, so what you've had to fork out for, you know, why and you know, all of those expenses and ask that saying it's 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 a breach of the Consumer Rights Act 2015 and you've now, you know, you've incurred these costs and see what they say. Mm. If they don't give it to you, then go to the railway, the rail ombudsman, because we are now seeing from previous strikes that cases for consequential loss are going to the rail ombudsman. And in some cases they are seeing in favour of the consumer. Right. So not all. 
but certainly some. So it depends if you've got all your evidence there that, you know, you had to incur these costs. So that could be, you know, you had concert tickets and you couldn't get the the money back for that because the concert still went ahead. It might be that you could get money for that. But if you've bought these things after the strike dates were announced, then you wouldn't be entitled to it. And I know it's a really simplistic thing to, to just mention again, but if you can't get to a concert, the concert goes ahead, your port of call is the train company for yep. reimbursement for those tickets. Yep. You should not be bothering the concert people because that's really well, not you can, their problem. Well, you can certainly try. You can certainly try and say if there's another date, they might be accommodating. But for them, it's not their fault it went ahead. So that's why it's a consequential loss because it's the consequential loss of the, of the strike or, you know, the, the train didn't run. And what happens if you've booked uh, a ticket for tomorrow? Let's say you've booked to go up to York. York's a lovely place. Uh, and it, tomorrow has been disrupted, but your return ticket, of course, has not been cancelled, And but you can't go there in the first place. Can you get a refund for both ways? That you might struggle with that because really? you can still go, but it's still worth claiming for it because it's a return yeah. that, that you couldn't use that return. So they might fight for it, but I would say still argue. And again, if you don't get the money back, go to the Rail Ombudsman. Um, the Rail Ombudsman. And what's your advice when people go to the Rail Ombudsman or write to the CEO? Is it the same rule as ever when you're dealing with uh, customer services, which is the more evidence, photographs, screenshots, details that you have, this is my situation. Absolutely. The more details you have, the stronger your case is. Absolutely. So if you, you know, this is a concert or the hotel that you've booked, obviously the evidence for that. So you've got the receipts, the dates and all of that information that you make it very clear cut as to when they were booked, how much it costs and, and how much you're in, incurring for that. Mm -hmm. And then say that you'll go to the Rail Ombudsman and then the Rail Ombudsman, you either ask for a deadlock letter. So they have to give you a deadlock letter and say, we're not, and they'll say, we're not changing our mind on this. Yeah. Or you can wait eight weeks and then take the matter to the Rail Ombudsman. And just uh, because we mentioned it a few times, it's ceoemail.com where you can uh, get the email addresses of CEOs and basically complain. Well, yes, it might just be a little bit quicker than waiting your eight weeks to go to the round on business. Yeah. Uh, let's take a call. Dave's uh, got in touch from the Isle of Arran. Uh, David, uh, what is your question for Helen? Well, it's, it's a question which uh, probably doesn't relate uh, directly to what your subject is. However, it, it does have a knock on. Uh, I uh, book a, a prepaid ticket uh, from Glasgow Central to U London Euston. Uh, I have to get a ferry across to the mainland to pick up uh, a train to get me to, to, uh, to Glasgow Central. If the ferry, for some reason, is delayed or is cancelled, um, who do I talk to about that? Because it's obviously not the train, but it is the RMT, which is the Railway Maritime. So, you know. Oh, interesting connection. It's a tricky one. <laughs> it's, well, no, you've still got your rights. You've still got your rights for um, a similar amount of percentage that you'll get back if it's delayed. Yeah. Um, and so you would just write to the company that you bought the ticket from and ask for your refund. And if it's delayed, then it's a, it's a percentage of that. Yeah, but the, uh, but the, the train uh, is not who I... I, mean, I bought a train ticket, but the, tr but the train line asks me to get to the station on time so I can pick up the train. If I'm delayed getting to the station, I can't make the connection. The train goes and I lose my money. But that's, uh, but that's, that would be a consequential loss so that you would go to the ferry company and say, this okay. is a consequential loss. I've, okay. now, I've now lost this as well. It might right. be that you can go to the train company saying, actually, because of this not running, I can't have this ticket. And they might allow you to change your ticket to a different time and they might charge £10 for that. Um, so you've got a couple of options there. OK, uh, David, thank you for that call. Um, we've talked about uh, getting emails uh, for CEOs and going directly to them. I just want to get your thoughts on a lot of people go on to Twitter to complain uh, about things like that and to ask for refunds. W what's your view on that? I'm, I'm always cautious about Twitter because there's a lot of scams where people are then being contacted by dummy accounts who pretend to be part of the train company. They got clever handles with the words customer service on them, and then they proceed to get scammed. So I'm very, always very wary. But is Twitter and social media an effective channel to use to make complaints? It can be. 
Um, I think some people think, oh, yes, I've been very successful on Twitter. Sometimes it's whether it's big companies and they don't like the bad press. But yeah. when it comes to something like trying, there's such a process for, for, for doing it, you're not going to get it through Twitter. It okay. just doesn't work through Twitter. So for trains, you've got to do it through their, that process and you'll, you'll make things longer. Good advice. Uh, uh, let's move on to another person who's got in touch. Louise uh, got in touch. She says, I have to travel to Great Ormond Street on Saturday for an important appointment on Monday. I really, really hope we're not going to be affected as there's no other way to get there. Um, now, there could still be disruption on Saturday. Can customers get refunds uh, on Sunday? I beg your pardon. Can customers get refunds on train services that are technically still running because there isn't a strike? But as we know with previous strikes, the moment the strike ends, the trains are in all different locations mm -hmm. the following day and the day after that, I've got huge knock on effects with delays and cancellations. So even if there's not a strike, can you still get a, a refund? What is likely to happen there on the next day is that they'll still run, but there will be a delay. So she'll be entitled to um, a percentage depending how long she's delayed for. So under the delay, we pay uh, rules she'll get she'll get something back on it but I imagine she's got all day then <laughs> yeah. then hopefully she'll she'll get there but it, you'll be able to claim for the delay and the percentage will depend on how long you've been delayed for yeah i mean there's a there's, there's a whole chart whether it's 15 to half an hour half an hour to an hour that gives you a percentage of how much money you're going to get back yeah general rule delayed over two hours you'll get your 100 percent back general oh, okay over two hours all your money back. Helen, it's been an education. Thank you so much. Uh, that's wonderful stuff. 